Hi, Kevin here. Today we're going to make and pre-bake a pie crust. And then, in a separate video, I'm going to use the crust for a very special pie from my childhood. So this crust is really easy to make. And I'm going to make it in my cheap little food processor. Right, so what I have in the food processor is one and a half cups of regular all-purpose flour. And to the flour, I'm going to add a half teaspoon of salt. I'm using kosher salt. You can use regular table salt. I'm also going to add two tablespoons of sugar because the pie I'm going to make is a sweet pie, so I want the pie crust to be a little sweet as well. Then add 113 grams or a half cup of cold diced butter, either salted or unsalted. All right, and then where's the lid? I'm going to give this a few spins just to break up the butter. All right, this looks good. So what we're aiming for are like little crumbs of flour and butter. Okay, and then I'm going to make this a rich pie crust. So I have an egg yolk here and I'm going to add three tablespoons. Actually, I'm going to add two tablespoons of ice water to the egg yolk. And I may need to add more. Can you even see? Let me move you out a little. Sorry about that. Just beat the egg yolk and the water together. And I'm using ice water because you want to keep this pastry dough very cold at all times. Yeah, and I may need to add a little more water. We shall see. I want just enough water so that the dough comes together. Here we go. Let's see how we're doing here. Okay, it's still a little dry. I'm going to add another tablespoon of ice water. All right. Now the dough is starting to clump. And that's exactly what you want. So if you take a bit of dough and you press it between your fingers and the dough holds together like this, you know you're good to go. This still seems a little dry to me. So I'm going to add just about a tea, not even a teaspoon. Well, about a teaspoon of water. Let's try this. Oh, much better. Yeah, you can never be certain about how much water to use because all flowers are different. Some flowers absorb uh, more moisture than other flowers do. The weather can affect uh, how much water you need for pie crust dough and so on. So now I'm going to dump this onto a sheet of cling film. Then I'm going to use the cling film to help me bring the dough together. Then 
there. Okay, now I can release the film. And I want to form this dough into a ball. Yeah, pie crust is very, very easy to make, especially if you have a food processor. So now I'm going to flatten the ball into a disc. And then rewrap it in the cling film. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, this goes into the refrigerator until it becomes very, very cold. And during that time, the flour particles will absorb all of the moisture in the uh, pastry and the butter will firm up. All right, so that's going to take about an hour. So we will come back then and roll out the dough. Okay, my dough has chilled for about an hour. So now we can roll it out. I'm going to roll out the dough on my pastry cloth. And the first thing you do with the pastry cloth is add a little flour and just rub it in to the cloth. Okay, now, and I'm using my French rolling pin. French in that it's tapered at each end. It works really well when you're trying to, to maintain a round shape with pastry dough. You start in the middle, give the dough a quarter turn, roll. And you're just rolling from the center to about an inch from the edge. And you do it slowly. If you try to do this very quickly or you apply too much pressure, the dough can start cracking. And we want to avoid cracking if at all possible. Okay, now instead of making you watch me roll out this dough, because it's going to take a couple of minutes, I think I will turn off the camera and then come back when it's pretty much all rolled out. Or maybe I'll just let the camera run and I'll chat with you for a bit. Yeah, so you notice that I used all butter for this crust. And that's because I like the flavor. Uh, I've also made uh, crust with vegetable shortening and I can tell you the flakiest pie crusts of all are indeed made with vegetable shortening. You can also make pie dough with half butter and half vegetable shortening. You can even make pastry dough with coconut oil, as I did when I made that, uh, what was it called? Um, I filmed the video for you. It was a really good pie. Oh, it was an almond pie. So maybe I'll post a link to that pie in the description box below. Yeah, so I'm just going slowly here. Rolling this out, giving it a quarter turn after every, well, we'll call it every revolution. And I will be using a nine inch pie plate for this dough. And I can't wait to show you the pie I'm going to use this crust for or for which I'm going to use this crust. Yeah, this is my birthday week, and this is a, it's going to be a pie that my mother used to make for me every birthday. But I'll talk more about that when I actually go to make that pie. Okay, so I'm looking to make a 12 inch diameter circle. And so far, no cracking. That's a good sign. 
And if you don't have a pastry cloth, you might want to think about obtaining one. They're not expensive. And as I said, you can throw it into the washing machine. I wash mine uh, on the cold water cycle, just with regular uh, laundry detergent. I don't bleach it because I don't want to bleach out. Well, there are some circles here to show you various diameters of different pie crusts. Yeah, so I don't want to bleach out those lines. But it comes clean, really, with just laundry detergent and cold water. And then when I put it in the dryer, I set the dryer to uh, the cool setting. And it doesn't take long at all for this cloth to dry. Okay. We are getting there. And I'm sure many of you have fast-forwarded the video at this point. Every time I try to do a short video, it ends up being a long video. Because in this instance, if you've never rolled out a pie crust before, you might want to see how it is done. And if I edit out the rolling process and just jump to the end, well, how do you even know that I really rolled out the crust? You don't. Maybe I had another crust ready to go and I just did a quick switcheroony. Okay, now I'm going to shore up the sides. Just use the palms of your hands to do this. In other words, you want to make sure that the sides are a little thicker than the center. If the sides become too thin, then the crust will crack. And as you can see, nothing is sticking. Alright, let's see. Okay, so here's my Pyrex pie dish. Okay, I need to go about an inch wider. I see one little crack, actually two little cracks developing on the edge, but that's okay. So any little cracks can just be pushed together. Test this again. A little wider over here and over here. All right, let's see. Yes, I think this is going to work. So now, here's what I do. I just fold the dough into a loose triangle. Here's the pie plate. And then you center the point of the triangle uh, in the pie plate. There. It's a very attractive dough. And then, do not stretch the dough at all. You want to lift and let the, dough, let the dough gently drop into the pie plate. If you stretch the dough, it will just shrink up uh, when you put it in the oven. All right, yes, looking very good here. Okay, now I'm going to give this, oh, I'm not going to trim any of the overhang. What I'm going to do is just fold it under a little. Like this. OK, 
Okay, and then I'm going to give it a semi-decorative edge by just pinching, taking my fingers and, and just pushing the dough together. I've noticed that when I make a pie dough with Crisco, the dough always holds its decorative edge. It doesn't always hold that edge when I use all butter. And that's because butter has a lower, what is it, a lower melting point than shortening. I think I have that right. All right, here's the crust. And then we're going to uh, be baking this crust. We're going to blind bake it, which means we're baking it without any filling. So what I'm going to do is pop this into the refrigerator while I preheat the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And then, uh, <clears throat> When the oven is preheated, we'll come back. All right, the pie shell has chilled and the oven is preheated to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. So now I'm docking the crust with the tines of a fork. And the reason you do this is because the crust will puff up when it goes into the hot oven. And you don't want it to do that. And as further insurance that the crust holds its shape, I'm going to take a sheet of parchment paper. I just cut out a round of parchment and I'm going to give it a light spritz with vegetable spray and then press it into the crust. And then to weight down the crust while it bakes, I'm going to add two pounds of dried beans. You could use pie weights, you could use uncooked rice, but the beans are inexpensive and I just have them. I keep them in this plastic tub with a lid and I use them only for weighing down pie crust. All right, I'm going to pop this into the oven for 15 minutes, then I'm going to remove the parchment and the beans and pop it back into the oven and lower the temperature to 375 degrees and let it bake just until the crust seems dry. And that's going to take about 10 minutes. So again, 15 minutes at 425 to close and remove the beans and the parchment, and then 10 minutes at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, we'll come back when this crust is all baked. All right, here's the pie crust all baked, fresh out of the oven, and it's still quite hot. Now, I will be putting a wet filling in here later on. So what I wanted to do is seal the bottom crust so it doesn't get soggy. And what you need for that is one egg white and a quarter teaspoon or so of salt. And just whisk that together. And the salt will help to break up the egg white. And then grab a pastry brush and brush the hot crust with the egg white. Now I know this was a super long video and for that I apologize, but well, I couldn't help it, alright? 
just wanted to show you everything. All right, we are done here. And either later today or tomorrow, I will make the special pie of my childhood. So thank you so much for watching. Move it out a little bit. And even though the video was long, I do hope that it was helpful to you in some small way. All right, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye for now.